Okay, today we're going to start our chemistry unit. We're going to talk about the particle theory. Particle theory is basically the theory that talks about the idea that all things, solids, liquids, gases, are made up of tiny little particles. And particle theory describes how those particles act or behave. So first thing we need to talk about is what is matter? Matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. So if something takes up space and has any kind of mass at all, it's called matter. It doesn't matter how much space it takes up or how much mass it has. For instance, the oxygen that you breathe in the air is considered to be matter. Why? Because, well, it takes up space, even though you can't even see it. It's such a small amount of space. And it actually has mass. It has some sort of, uh, it has particles in it. So basically, oxygen is considered to be matter. There's all kinds of things that are considered to be matter that we can't even see. So it doesn't matter how much space it takes up or how much mass it has. If it takes up any space or has any mass, we call it matter. So what is mass? Mass is the amount of material or stuff or particles in an object. Okay? It is different from weight. Weight is due to gravity. So basically your weight depends on how much gravity is pulling down on you on a particular place or a particular planet. That's why on Earth your weight is different than it would be on Jupiter and it's different on Jupiter than it would be on the moon. Okay, So that's weight. It's how much gravity is pulling down on you. Mass is how many particles you have in you. So mass pretty much stays you know, relatively constant. Granted, you lose some particles here and gain some particles there, but all in all, it's pretty constant. Whereas weight changes based on the gravity in the area you're in. On the Earth, they're very similar, okay? Because weight on the Earth and mass on the Earth is very similar. But as you travel out into space and go to other planets, um, then it matters a great deal. It's very different. So, what are the properties of matter? Well, there's two types of properties. There's physical properties. Okay. Physical properties are properties that you can see or measure, but without actually changing what the matter is made out of or its composition. So examples of physical properties are its color, hardness, its melting point, matter's boiling point, its malleability or its um, bendableness, its breakableness. All those things are considered to be physical properties. Then you have chemical properties. Chemical properties are properties that you can only see when you actually change what the matter is made out of. When you change it from one type of matter into another, from one thing into another. Um, chemical properties are things like flam how flammable it is, whether or not it will burn, will it rot, will the matter rust, does it decompose, does it ferment, does it corrode, does it explode. Those are chemical properties. Now, there are also physical changes in matter and chemical changes in matter, and they go along about the same lines. So physical changes are in matter are when you change the matter's physical properties, when you change it without changing what it's made out of. So for instance, if you take a, I don't know, a rubber band and you break it, it's still a rubber band. You haven't changed what it's made out of. Or if you take a spoon and you bend it, it's still a spoon. It's still made out of metal. You haven't changed what it's made out of. Um, melting is another physical change. If you melt an ice cube, it's still made out of water, Okay, H2O. So when it's frozen, it's H2O. When it's melted, it's H2O. Even when it goes to a gas, it's H2O. You haven't changed what that matter is made out of. You've only changed kind of what it looks like. So melting, freezing, dissolving things in, in other things is a physical change. When you dissolve salt or sugar in water, you're not actually changing what the salt and the sugar are made out of. You're just making the particles smaller and smaller and smaller until you can't actually see them anymore. But the particles are still in the water, and they're still salt particles. And if you doubt that, if you taste the water, you taste salt. So basically dissolving is a physical change of matter, making particles smaller and smaller and smaller. Evaporating, condensating, all those are physical changes. Chemical changes in matter are actually when you change what something is made out of. You change it from one type of substance into a different type of substance. So for instance, burning. If you take a piece of paper and you burn that paper, you no longer have paper. You have ashes okay, and smoke and soot. So you've made it into something completely different. When you take an apple, if you leave it in the bottom of your refrigerator for too long and it decays, 
eventually after in time you no longer have an apple you have this gooey decaying mush okay um, so those are chemical changes in matter when you change something from one thing into another so let's talk about the states of matter what different states matter can be in matter can be a solid okay if it's a solid it means it has a definite volume and a definite shape definite shape means you can't easily change its shape without breaking it okay, or destroying it okay definite volume means you can't really change the amount of space it takes up so solids are matter that cannot flow and they have definite volumes meaning that they take up the same amount of space no matter what and definite shapes which means it's difficult to change their shape without breaking them then you have liquids. Liquids have a definite volume, which means you can't really change the amount of space they take up, but they don't have a definite shape. You can change their shape. For instance, if you take one cup of water and you pour it into a spherical bowl, it will take the shape of the bowl, but it's still one cup of water inside there. If you then take that one cup of water and you pour it into a cylindrical bowl or you pour it into a flask, okay, um, that water will still be one cup of water. Its volume is exactly the same. It's definite. But now it's taking the shape of the cylindrical cup or the flask. So its shape has changed. If you take water and you spill it out all over the counter, one cup of water, and you spill it out all over the counter, it's still one cup of water, but now it's taken the shape of the counter. Okay? So liquids change their shape, but they don't change their volume. Then you have gases. Gases are able to change their shape and their volume. They do not have a definite volume, and they do not have a definite shape. So for instance, if you put a gas, let's say steam, into a very hot container, that steam will spread out and take the shape of that container. If you then release the steam out into the open, that gas will spread out as far as it can and take the shape of the room. Its volume also changes. The gas will spread out and it will take up more and more and more space. Another example is perfume. Perfume, when you spray it, is like a gas. So when you spray that perfume, that perfume spreads out and it takes the shape of the room. And its volume, the amount of space it takes up changes because it spreads all the way across the room, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So gases actually change their shape and their volume. All of these states of matter, though, always are physical changes. So if you're changing from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas, those are all physical changes. You're not actually changing what the matter is made out of. You're not making anything new. You're just either solidifying it or melting it or spreading it out so as you picture here's a picture to kind of show you the particles inside of these three types solid liquid and gas inside a solid the particles are stacked very closely together and they don't move around much they just vibrate in place so they stand in place and they vibrate and that's it they don't switch places or switch spots they don't move around each other they just vibrate in place that's a solid now the particles in a liquid are still close together, but they move around and they actually will swap places with each other and move around between each other and up and down and around. And that's the particles in a liquid. Again, they're still close together, but they'll swap places. That's why liquids tend to flow, because the particles are swapping places with other particles and that makes them flow. And finally, the particles in a gas will spread out as far as they possibly can and they end up being spread way far apart from each other. So solids, liquids, and gases. Guys, I would draw this in your notes because I can tell you Cambridge usually has a question on it that asks you to go ahead and draw solids, liquids, and gases and what the particles look like, and this is what you would draw about what the particles look like. In a solid, they're very close together. In a liquid, they kind of move around, but they're still close together, but they're moving around. And in a gas, they're spread way far out. So, just to recap, in case you didn't get it before, which of these have a definite volume? Tell yourself first right now. Okay, that's enough time. Um, solids have a definite volume. They don't change how much space they take up. Liquids have a definite volume. They don't change how much space they take up. Gases do not have a definite volume. They 
do change the amount of space they take up. Gases will spread out as far as they possibly can and take up as much space as they possibly can. Which ones have a definite shape? Go ahead and tell yourself right now. Okay, that's enough time. Solids have a definite shape. They don't change their shape very easily unless you like break them or shatter them. Liquids do not have a definite shape. They will take on the shape of whatever container you put them in. And finally, gases do not have a definite shape. Again, they will take up the shape of whatever area or container that they are in. Compressible, which ones do you think can actually be compressed and pushed closer and closer and closer together? Go ahead and tell yourself right now, which ones do you think can be compressed or pushed closer together? Okay, that's enough time. Solids, no, they cannot be pushed closer to closer together. If you push on solids, you end up breaking them. Okay. Liquids, no. You can't really take a liquid in your hands and, or, or take a liquid in a container and press it closer and closer together. Eventually, once you've pressed it to a certain point, it's done. But gases can actually be compressed. You can push gases closer and closer together. If you don't believe that, think about like a syringe. If you have a syringe, which is one of those little like pumpy things with a pump, and you put your finger on the end of it, and you start pushing the air inside the syringe, you can push the plunger in and actually push the air down. You can compress it. When you do that, you create something called gas pressure. So what are the changes in states of matter? Physical changes. How can we physically change matter? Well, you can freeze it. Freezing is when you go from a liquid to a solid. So if you make something colder, you go from a liquid to a solid, we call that freezing, and that's called the freezing point. Now, different ion objects have different freezing points. Different types of matter have different freezing points. For instance, water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? That's water when water freezes. Um, metal will freeze, but at a much higher temperature. So you don't have to have the room 32 degrees in order to have metal freeze. Metal is frozen at much higher temperatures. The point at which something freezes is called its freezing point. Then you have melting. Melting is going from a solid to a liquid. Okay? So when you heat something up, it can go from a solid to a liquid. And when that happens, you've hit its melting point. The point at where which something melts is called melting point. And again, Different objects have different melting points. Water melts, again, at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. When it gets higher than that, water melts. Okay, that's its melting point. Metal, on the other hand, won't melt until you get it up to 1,200 or 1,300 degrees Celsius. That's metal's melting point. And different have, metals have different melting points, but you get the idea. So different types of matter have different melting and freezing points. Notice the freezing point for water and the melting point for the water are the same temperature. Okay? So when you hit 32 degrees Celsius, or sorry, Fahrenheit, or zero degrees Celsius, water will begin to freeze. If you go, and if you get any colder than that, it freezes faster. When you hit 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius and you start to get warmer than that, the water will actually melt. So the melting point and freezing point are the same temperature. Then you've got condensating. Condensating is when you go from a gas to a liquid. And the temperature at which something goes from a gas to a liquid is called its condensation point. The best example for condensation that I know of is when basically you take a hot shower and the steam from your shower touches your mirror. When the steam from your shower touches your mirror, it ends up turning back into liquid, and then you can kind of draw on the fog in your mirror or on the liquid in your mirror. That's called condensating. Again, when something goes from a gas to a liquid. Then you have evaporating. Evaporating is when something goes from a liquid to a gas, but it happens at the top of the liquid. The best example of evaporating is basically if you take water and you put it outside in the sun, Eventually, the water will evaporate and it will not be any, there anymore. It will turn into vapor and it will end up going into the atmosphere or into the, the air as vapor. Okay? So evaporating is when you go from a liquid to a gas, but from the top of the liquid. 
Boiling is when you go from a liquid to a gas, but it happens from the bottom of the liquid. So for instance, when you put a pot of water on a stove and you start heating up the water, the bottom of that water gets super hot and turns into steam. The steam then rises through the water as bubbles, and then it comes up to the top and is released into the atmosphere. So evaporating and boiling are both when you go from a liquid to a gas, but evaporation happens from the top of the liquid, usually due to the sun or some sort of heat source outside, and boiling happens from the bottom of the liquid when you actually have heat coming up through the bottom of the liquid. So one is evaporating, one is boiling. The point when something evaporates is called its evaporation point. So when it goes from a liquid to a gas, that temperature is called as its evaporation point. When something goes from a liquid to a gas and boiling, that temperature is called its boiling point. Water's boiling point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. And you've got sublimation. Sublimation is when you go directly from a solid directly to a gas. You skip going to a liquid. It doesn't go to a liquid. Uh, for instance, water. When you freeze water, when you start to melt it, it actually, when you freeze water, it's ice. Then when you start to melt it, it turns into a liquid. It turns into water. And then if you keep heating it up, it'll turn into gas. It'll turn into steam. Okay. Sublimation is going straight from a solid straight to a gas. There is no liquid in between. The best example of sublimation is dry ice. If you've ever seen dry ice, when you heat up dry ice, it goes straight from a solid to a gas. It goes straight to smoke. There's no liquid left behind. So if you take a piece of dry ice and you put it on a table, okay, you move that dry ice around, okay, it starts turning into smoke okay, and basically into gas. If you move that dry ice and you feel that table, there will be no liquid there. It skips the liquid stage and goes straight to gas. The point where something goes straight to a gas from a solid is called the sublimation point. Guys, not all things do sublimation. For instance, water does not sublimate. Water must turn into a liquid before it goes to gas. Okay? But dry ice and certain other types of, of substances will go straight from solid to gas. All of these changes are physical changes in matter you're not actually changing what the matter is made out of. When you change the water from an ice cube into water, into gas, it's still water. It's still made out of H2O atoms. Okay? So you're not changing what it's made out of. You're just changing what it looks like. All of these are physical changes above here. All of them. None of them are actually changing what the thing is made out of. So, just to give you a little diagram, when things get colder, you go from gas to liquid to solid. When things get hotter, you go from solid to liquid to gas. Get that thing out of the way. There we go. Um, when you go from a solid to a liquid, it's called melting. And the temperature where that happens is called the melting point. When you go from a liquid to a gas, it's called evaporating. And the temperature where that happens is the evaporation point. It can also be the boiling point if you're heating the liquid from underneath. Then, when you go from a gas to a liquid, it's called condensation. And the point or the temperature where that happens is the condensation point. When you go from a liquid to a solid, it's called freezing. And the point where that happens is called the freezing point. You might want to draw this diagram out in your notes. It will help you remember. There's one arrow that's not in here. When you go straight from a solid to a gas, so if you had a big arrow that went all the way across solid to gas, that would be your sublimation point or sublimation. And people always ask me, hey Sullivan, is there a way that gas can go straight to a solid? The answer is yes. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's called deposition. Just FYI. So a couple more things you need to know. Dissolving is a physical change in matter. It's where you change matter physically. Dissolving is when you take solid particles and you break them down in a liquid. Okay? And you break them down into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces until you can no longer see them. But they are still in the liquid. They are just so small you cannot see them. So for instance, if you take salt and you stir it up in hot water, um, that salt will break down into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces until you cannot see it anymore inside of the water. 
but it is still salt and it is still in there. You have not changed what it is made out of. So it is a physical change, not a chemical change. Okay, you've only made it so small now that you can't see it. Some terms you're going to need to know later on about dissolving. A solvent is the water or the liquid that the particles are dissolved within. A solute is the actual solid particles that are being broken down. And solubility is the amount of the solid you could put into the liquid and still get it to basically dissolve and break down. For instance, if you take salt and you put it in liquid, you stir it up, it all dissolves away, you can't see it anymore. If you put another teaspoon of salt in, you might stir it up and it might all dissolve away and you can't see it anymore. anymore. Eventually, you're going to put so much salt into that liquid that it will not dissolve anymore. That when that happens, you've hit the solubility point. You've hit the point where you cannot dissolve any more of that solid in that liquid. And we call that the solubility point. If you've ever made iced tea or Kool-Aid, you may have hit the solubility point. If you ever put like packet after packet after packet of Kool-Aid or Country Time or any of those powders into a liquid, and finally you get to the point that it doesn't matter how much you stir, you still get powder on the bottom of the, of the container. Okay, That's because you've hit the solubility point. You've hit the point where you cannot dissolve any more of that solid in that liquid, it's full. Okay, and that's solubility. Well, last thing we need to know about here, there's two more actually. Gas pressure, we talked about that earlier. That's the pressure that gases create when you compress them. And so if you compress gases, they create gas pressure. And finally, diffusion is the process where a substance, it's got to be a solid or a liquid, basically spreads out through another substance. Okay. So if, for instance, if you take a drop of ink and you put it in water, that's called, and it basically that ink spreads out throughout all the water, that's called diffusion. If you take um, perfume and you spray it in one part of a room, and that perfume spreads out through the whole room to the point where now you can smell it everywhere in the room, that's called diffusion. When the oxygen particles come into your alveoli sacs, they spread out through the wall of your alveoli sacs into your capillaries and into your blood, and that's called diffusion. Again, all of these, though, are physical changes in matter. We're not changing what the stuff is made out of. We're only changing how it looks and how big it is.